Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you how you can plot individual and average growth curves when you run a latent growth curve model in the M plus software. In case you are new to this channel, on this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually on Tuesday. And so if this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like this video, then please hit the like button. So in this video, I want to talk about latent growth curve models in M plus. And specifically, I want to show you how you can obtain and view plots that you can generate in M plus for growth curve uh, trajectories or individual and average trajectories of the scores over time in a growth model, which is useful when you want to know, for example, what the results of a growth curve model really mean and whether there's a good fit between your observed data and the model implied trajectories that the growth curve model implies. For example, when you fit a linear growth curve model, you want to know, do these linear curves represent the observed data well, or is there a lot of discrepancy when you look at your individual trajectories? Is there a lot of deviation from a linear trajectory over time, for example? So let's jump right in it. And here you can see um, M plus syntax or M plus input file for a linear growth curve model, assuming equal spacing of time in this case. So we have four measurement occasions here, four variables y1 through y4 that um, reflect those scores on four equally spaced time points and we're fitting a linear growth curve model in this case. You can see here in the model statement I have my intercept factor and I have my slope factor and then I'm using this special M plus syntax for growth curve models that uses this random slope symbol here that tells M plus that the slope factor is a random variable, a random factor that indicates um, linear changes over time. How does M plus know that this is a linear growth curve model? It knows that because there's only one growth factor here that I call slope. So that is the second factor that is listed before this random slope symbol here. And then also because the loadings are fixed to zero at time one, one at time two, two at time three, and three at time four, reflecting linear changes over time. So you can specify a linear growth curve model in M plus with a single line of code. And M plus will automatically know how to properly specify this model with those two factors, with all the intercepts or additive constants fixed to zero and the means and variances and the covariance of the growth factors freely estimated as well as a free estimation of the error variances for the observed variables. So what is um, special here in this syntax, so to say, for today's video is that I added the plot option. The plot option allows us to obtain individual growth curves, both in terms of the individual observed or empirical values and the model estimated or model implied curves. And so that comparison I want to show you today or how you can look at those different curves. And so this works by adding this plot command in M plus and choosing type equals plot three. And then with the series option, we indicate that the Y scores should be on the X axis and that what we want to plot is the scores as a function of changes over time by putting the slope factor here in parentheses after each observed variable in the series option. Now the um, names for these factors here are arbitrary or user defined, so to say. I chose the name intercept for the intercept factor and the name slope for the slope factor. You could, of course, also pick um, different labels here. Then you would have to make sure that you adjust your labels here in the plot command accordingly. So let's take a look at what this um, re results in when we run this model with the plot option. And so first of all, let's take a quick look at the output file. I have a separate video where I discuss the um, output file in greater detail. I just want to show you that for um, this model here, we obtain a decent model fit. You can see the chi-square test of model fit here is um, non-significant. So 
we have a chi-square value of 4.261, five degrees of freedom, the p-value is 0.51, so the model does not have to be rejected. It fits these data well, surprise, surprise. It's actually because, or partly because I simulated these data, so and the model is correctly specified. In practice, you may find more often that the model does not fit, so then you have to think about that, but here the model fits well. And so let's take a look at the model results that in this case we can trust because we know the model fits well. And we can see here when we look at the means that the mean at the onset, uh, so the true score mean at time one was estimated to be about 100. So that's our starting point for the growth curve or for the average growth curve, so to say. So we start with a value of 100 on average at time one. And then you can see the slope is about 1.5 or the slope mean, which indicates that per unit of time, we have a linear increase of about 1.5 according to this model. So with each unit of time, the increase of the average growth curve is 1.5. For example, 1.5 IQ points if this were a study of IQ uh, scores and if we found that there was an increase in IQ scores due to something development or intervention or something like that. So you can see the parameters here are automatically estimated by M plus the covariance between the slope factor and intercept factors are free parameter, the two means of the factors are free parameters, and then also the residual or error variances. And of course, the factor variances are also estimated. So those are the parameters of this model that M plus gives automatically when you run this syntax. Now let's take a look at the plot option. So we can look at those different plots by going to plot and then view plots. You can look at different things, histograms, scatter plots, but that's not really what we are so interested in right now. We want to take a look at the growth curves. And so one thing that we can do is we can first of all plot the sample means by clicking on sample means. So that would be our observed average growth curve, so to say, that we're looking at right now using the observed means of Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. So let's take a look at that. And you click on that, then this diagram window opens, you can still go back to your output if you want to by clicking here on this um, window and then going back to the output. And so in this diagram, you can see we have here the mean at time one. So that's the observed mean, which is about 100. And then you can see that there is a tendency for those observed means to go up. It's not strictly linear when we plot the observed means, um, but this could just be due to measurement error. So the fact that the observed means are not exactly on a straight line doesn't necessarily mean that the model is bad. And we saw the model fit well. And here, so see the data were generated from a linear growth curve model. So um, it's okay. So that's just to see the observed means in the curve. And now we can also plot the model estimated means by going back to a plot and then view plots and then clicking on estimated means. So those are now the model implied means that are generated based on the estimated growth factor means. So here on the far left hand side, you can see 100 again, a little bit more than 100. That is the mean of the intercept factor that M plus estimated. And then you can see that there's an increase, a straight line linear increase in the means over time. And so that a straight line is now estimated based on the intercept factor mean and the slope factor mean, which was about 1.5. So per unit of time, there's an increase of 1.5 here, according to our linear growth curve model. Now, what is also interesting to look at is both of these curves combined. So you can compare them and see if there's a deviation between the observed and model estimated average curves. And you can do that by again going to plot and then view plots and then picking sample and estimated means at once. So then you have both of them in the same plot when you click on that. And you can see in this case, there is quite a bit of overlap here. There's not a big discrepancy between the sample means here with the um, square or 
circle and the estimated means which are depicted here with this triangle and so they almost perfectly overlap indicating again or reflecting the fact that this model is correctly specified. Now what we also like to look at with growth curve models and that's maybe the most interesting aspect are the individual curves. So we want to look at what did the actual trajectories of our individuals look like and you can also do this for all individuals in your data set you can look at the individual curves by going to plot and then view plots again observed individual values that gives you the observed growth curves for all individuals when we click view then m plus asks us um, whether we want to view these individual curves in consecutive order meaning going through the data set from the first line or first row down to the last row or whether we want to look at them in random order. Yeah, so you can pick a random um, selection of curves from your data set or a random selection of individuals and plot those. Or you can go in consecutive order starting with individual number one or row number one in your data set. And then also M plus asks you how many curves you want to plot in each plot because if you have for example 500 subjects then it doesn't make a ton of sense usually to have all 500 curves in one plot because then you wouldn't see much because you have too much um, overlap of all these curves and so M plus proposes by default to have only 10 curves per plot and then you can click through the whole data set 10 curves at a time um, and then you, you see better or you could do fewer than 10 or you could do more than 10, whatever you like. And then individual data is what we want to look at. So I'm going to just click OK. And now we can see those are the first 10 curves in the data set and they were generated by a linear model. So you might wonder why are they not linear if they were generated by a linear model as the population model. Again, this was simulated data. So why are they not perfectly linear? That's because there's also random measurement error, meaning these scores are not perfectly reliable. Those are the observed scores. And so observed scores contain measurement error. They're not 100% um, reliable. So not 100% of the variance is explained by the intercept and slope factors here. There's also measurement error variance. And therefore these curves are not perfectly straight line. So again, this doesn't mean the model is misspecified. However, if you found a certain pattern that was very persistent, for example, a non-linear pattern in many curves that is very obvious, then we could um, think about whether a linear model really is good or whether we need a different growth function. So for example, if you find that your linear growth model doesn't fit the data well, then you might take a look at these individual curves and then try to find out is there maybe a non-linear process here. And you can click through the whole data set by going on this arrow here where it says get next sample. So you click and then you have the next 10 curves and the next 10 curves and so on. So you can click through your entire data set and look at all the curves conveniently in this plot. And again, you can see they're not all linear. And there's variability, some show an increase, show, some show a decline. We saw on average there's a slight increase in the scores, but of course that doesn't have to be the case for every individual. The last thing that I want to show you today is how to also take a look at the model implied estimated curves, so the ones that will be perfectly linear because they are generated based on the model parameters. So again, we go to plot view plots and then we click on estimated individual values to view the model implied curves that are implied by the linear model. I'm going to do 10 curves again, now starting at index 121. I could also, of course, start again at the first individual by um, entering one here in this field starting at index. So we're going to start at the beginning going to click OK and so now you can see those are the model estimated or model implied curves and since they are reflecting the true scores they are perfectly linear. So now we have the ones that are generated based on the growth curve factors. And again we can click through the entire data set and look at all the model implied curves for every individual.
you can even click on those lines and then it'll show you which individual that is. So this, for example, is uh, record number 77. So the person or row number 77 in the data set and shows you the exact values for each variable. This individual started out with a Y1 score of 119 or that is the model implied score and then ended with a score of 130 according to this model. That's also very useful that you can click on each of these um, curves to get the values and that works not only for the model estimated curves but also for the individual curves. Another feature that is useful in M plus is that you can save the plot data. So if you, for example, want to make a nicer plot for a journal article or for a presentation, then you might want to save those data points and plot them more nicely in a program that is more specialized for making uh, nice plots. And you can do that again by clicking on plot and then save plot data. That option allows you to save all the data points that are plotted here into a text file and then that text file can be saved and you can open that for example in Microsoft Excel to make a better plot or in some other program. So that is useful. Um, you can also directly save this plot as a JPEG, so as a picture file if you like it enough. You could also use it like that. But oftentimes what I do is I use the save plot data option to make a nicer plot based on the data points that are shown here. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for the next stats tutorial next week, and um, I'll see you next time.